with us, Texilla American University. And I have to say to you, uh, participants, that I myself was very pleased to know Texilla American University has been with the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce since the inception 10 years ago, 2010. And since that time too, Sri Bala Kumar, who is the Assistant Registrar Operations of Texilla American University, has also been a counselor on the Chamber of Commerce and has been very committed to the Green Committee and the Chambers as a whole, always dedicating his attention and time when needed. So thank you, Sri Bala, for making this happen tonight. Drawing in Sri Bala from the Texilla American University is its CEO, Mr. Shyam Kumar, who is based in New Jersey, USA. I don't know if that has anything to do with your name, Texilla American University, you'll tell me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you. And along with the two of them, we also have on board Dr. Ajay Kumar Singh Rajput, who is the registrar of the university. And together, I will treat them as the panelists for tonight to share with us some information on the university. Viewers, we propose to have more of a, a chat session than necessarily a very formal interaction. And I would encourage you, if you have any questions, place them in the chat box. Uh, we will take them along as we go. I myself will be throwing out some questions to the panelists. So with that, let me ask um, maybe Sri Bala to say a few words as the GCCI council member and then Gentlemen, I will ask you to tell me a little about Texilla University, the principal members who make up the top, top, um, I would say, tier of the university, and it's managing it. Oh, we'll start there. Thank you. Go right ahead. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am delighted to join uh, in this uh, first session initiated by the Green Economy Committee of uh, Georgetown Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it has been a long time plan of us uh, to find within our uh, member committees to understand what we are contributing to the uh, green economy. So this allows uh, us to tell that what we actually have with Texela uh, Texilla American University since 2010, uh, we are in many uh, information through GCCA and uh, and uh, guidance in terms of uh, uh, our existence. Request. Um, Sorry, Sri Bala. For some reason, we're not getting you clearly. Sometimes I, I don't know if it's if if you if you can just repeat yourself there. Thanks. Fine. You can hear me now, Michelle, sir. Yes, I can, and I'm hearing you clearly. Yes. Fine. Great. Uh, once again, uh, uh, we thank uh, the Austin Chamber of Commerce, the Green Economy Committee, uh, adding me as a member. Uh, uh, and we are also a long time member of Georgetown Chamber of Commerce. That is 10 years uh, uh, since we started uh, the university. Of business and administration recently. Uh, it has been a great journey. Uh, and uh, uh, and today's uh, discussion, we make green economy in terms of building our uh, uh, building as well as our uh, education itself. Uh, that is a small um, uh, introduction about Texilla and I would uh, uh, engage our CEO and registrar uh, to contribute more about uh, talking about Texilla. Over to you, sir. Dr. Ajay, I can get started. Uh, thank you, Bala, and thank you, GCCI, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, talking about Texila, we started our operations in higher education in the year 2010, uh, and we have our presence in, uh, in, in three major continents. 
uh, Guyana being our one of our primary uh, ventures where we offer this at Excel American University. Uh, we also have a campus in Africa where we have a full-fledged university and a medical program along with uh, other allied health and uh, business management programs. Uh, we offer online programs in India. And you know, very recently, uh, we also uh, operate, started our presence in North America where we have started a homeschooling program. So what we say is if you come to Texila at kindergarten, uh, you, know, you can graduate, you can be a doctor and move on. So we offer uh, from the entire spectrum of kindergarten from the age five, until you, as long as you want to learn. And that is what we promote. That is what our idea is, to engage a, a, life, a lifespan of learning. Um, with that said, you know, I will also add on that uh, the Caribbean uh, education system, uh, you know, historically, uh, in the, especially in the medical system, has been offshore. You know, a lot of students come from abroad. Uh, they come to Guyana. They come to St. Lucia, uh, Grenada, wherever it is, and study and go back home. And, and typically, these schools are called offshore medical schools. However, I can say that I'm, I'm sure a lot of members will vouch that Texila has been an inshore as a national university in Guyana, not necessarily an offshore system at all. Uh, we are in Guyana, we are, we are working with the people of Guyana, and we are a Guyanese university in all aspects and all sense, and also a Caribbean university. Um, with that, I'll probably hand on uh, you know, to Dr. Rajiv to make any comments uh, from his end. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mr. Shan Kumar. Go right ahead, Dr. Ajay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I welcome you all, all the members of the GCCI board. And I'm thankful that Mr. Bala also initiated the call. And you also, who has just given a chance to interact with this. Today, just we can just uh, give you the overview of what exactly we are having. Like Mr. Shyam has told you, we are more of the Guyanese University. as. We are having our own campus over here and uh, we have um, all the documents and all the papers related to the national requirements that we fulfill over here. And to just to tell you the brief over the uh, textile journey uh, from, the, the, uh, from here in Guyana, that we started our campus in Kichlo, Kichlo Labor College with only seven students. And now we are having a representation of uh, for more than 45 countries students. And on board, the students are around 650 students, those who are getting their education in the field of the medical medicine. And they are, recently, we are the last year, we have started the public health program where we are offering the master's program, master of public health and a bachelor of public health. This, uh, further than we have expanded our college, college of business management, we are offering uh, BBA and the MBA. And the simultaneously, uh, we are going for that Nursing, nursing college also, and recently we are just like Mr. Sham told that we are having a very robust system about the online education. So recently we are just planning to sign the MOU with the Coab Suriname for the Masters of Nursing program. So this is the entire journey around uh, in this 10 year uh, duration. We have graduated more than 250 students in the different different fields. And we offer from the graduation to the post-graduation and the PhD level education in the text learn. And by, if I tell you about the, like this platform is a, that green, green, uh, green, green, uh, green building. We need to just explore. We can, we need to just tell the board that what all the initiatives uh, we have taken for the, uh, for the, uh, to get in a green campus. So, uh, Bala, uh, are you sharing the screen or uh, shall I share my screen over there? That you, you could share your screen. Uh-huh. You could share your screen. Okay, okay. it's okay. Uh, whosoever has uh, shared the screen, it's okay for me. But I'm going to share it, sir. Yeah, please. Please, please. Go ahead. But you're doing well in the meantime. Go ahead. Like green uh, green building concept, what we are using the main concept has been taken by the Edge, which is the IFC uh, IFC initiative for giving a certification in the green building. But where the, we are using the we are using the efficiency, using the energy, the water, and the other resources over there, and we are not disturbing the any landscape which is available over here like minimum disturbance to the landscape and site conditions. We use the non-toxic and the recycled, recycled or recyclable materials. We are also using efficient water use because uh, we are 
just if i explain you about the energy efficiency that we are having a natural ventilation available in all the classrooms and well lighted uh, campus if you just want to visit the campus please kindly visit i invite you everyone we are having a natural light in our campus we are having a proper refrigeration we have the ac acs are installed which is a temperature controller we can control that uh, temperature as well and uh, by using that ac up to certain temperature it will auto go for the this uh, switch off mode then for the lighting we have uh, we are using the led lights which is just consuming a less less electricity like roof if i talk about the roof we are having a clear roof uh, we are having a two uh, big uh, uh, quadrangles in the two buildings part we are having a natural light and we are so polycarbonated sheets are placed on the roof which is giving a natural light over there <clears throat> I was curious on that, Doctor Ajay. Uh, the transparent roof—is it? Uh, how much of the building does it encompass? Twenty-five percent or more? Could you say? Uh, I can say that, uh, like my uh, the quadrangle between the two buildings are covering uh, more than thirty to fifty percent, I believe. It was a very big, big, big quadrangle we have given to both the buildings. So it's covering more than thirty to fifty percent. Very good. Thank you. Well, you can go for the next slide, please. Yes. Like if I talk about the water efficiency, we are having a dual flush uh, water closet in the bed, and uh, the you will be delighted to know that we are not wasting any water over there. Whatever the water is storing, we are collecting in the that uh, uh, drain drain that is used for the further irrigation for the buildings for the green uh, green. Uh, green grass and all the plants flowering plants we are just using that water for irrigation as well which is giving a good effect over there like if you talk about the material efficiency that windows are uh, all the windows in the entire building as of the pvc and walls are pre casted concrete wall and flooring as of tile uh, tile and roof insulation is a concrete and tile and we are having a that tall ceiling in, in entire building which is giving a extra Uh, effect as a extra cooling effect to our campus over there. Like this, uh, we are using the energy, water, and the material. What we have used in the campus. Please go ahead, Mr. Bar. Like uh, that uh, entire things, uh, like uh, full state put building is. We are having a one committee that is state and building committee who look after the entire maintenance of uh, the building. Who who create the who the like they are having the tag for completing two meetings uh, in a semester, and that semester that committee meeting everybody just uh, discuss over there what all the new initiatives can be taken up, and how uh, more uh, refinement can be done on the maintenance part uh, to just ensure the green green concept of the uh, of the building. We like the, we also celebrate the that like like. It, environmental environmental day over there we go for the green plantation plantation drive last year we planted around 30 30, 30 to 40 plants which is giving a which will give us a the green green uh, environment in near future over there very very nice glad to hear that because i notice even in front of the building you have a little greenery there very good remember uh, we are just uh, we are not uh, planning to concrete our base because it is also giving a we are Uh, planning to give a more of the land, uh, normal natural land, so that whatever the rain, like well, Ghana is uh, having a good rain over here, so whatever water we are getting, we cannot uh, just flow in the rains and all. So we are just trying to open the, uh, we are just not concreting the entire campus. Only the pathway is concreted. Rest of the land is just without concrete. So which is uh, observing the water more. So water level is not a problem in here. So we are looking for that that part also. that uh, we are not wasting the water and conser conservation of the water like mr bala is associated with the green uh, green panel so it's long and if you can just see the second, 17th slide so he already engaged himself in attending the workshop uh, conducted by the edge and uh, we are who and we are following the guidelines and the suggestions which are been given on the edge website and we try to just finish uh, we try to uh, install we try to Uh, just uh, uh, create create the environment. Though we are not having any certification from them, 
but we definitely want to get some certification from the edge but we are following all the norms of the edge who is just building a green building concept over there and i also just request in this panel uh, board that if the georgetown chamber of commerce if they are having any guidelines on the green uh, green building concept then we will uh, definitely going to follow those suggestions and we'll try to just uh, accomplish everything over there so this was about the brief about my campus and about my texla american university and uh, just uh, now i can just uh, give a open platform to for the chat if you having any question over there though we are not expert but we are also following the guidelines but what the best practices we are doing that definitely we want to share with the entire this panel so that uh, we can be helpful for creating this green building concept over there thank you thank you very much thank you dr ajay that was very informative i do have a few questions for you um outside of the green aspect i couldn't help noticing that when you first started you had seven students yes. and you've now climbed to 659 yes. can you tell us a little about the secret <laughs> so that part <laughs> uh, not a secret secret is only one man that is a quality education what we are providing <laughs> and to be to just you will be delighted to know that uh, like in the, we are having only one college in the caribbean those who are having accreditation for the pg uh, offering the pg courses in the medicine and like you all aware that in uh, gaina only national accreditation council is the only one uh, regulatory body which uh, give us the uh, this accreditation so as of now we applied for eight uh, pg specialization post graduate uh, uh, that specialization and out of eight we have got uh, two specialization and we can we are planning we were planning to start the two specialization that like pg in anesthesiology and the pg in emergency medicine but due to this uh, uh, this covid situation everything is locked down and just we are just uh, <laughs> hang hang in between but definitely we are going to offer uh, and we are committed to offer the quality education not only for the gaina ma'am not only for the caribbean for but the entire world which is our mission also to provide a, a normal quality education not only in the medicine but all in the allied allied uh, allied sciences and as for the requirement of the society we want to elaborate our thank you yes sir and i i was curious though um from moving from 7 to 659 Which years would you say the spike happened in when the trajectory took off? That uh, uh, I have just uh, the, the historical part. Uh, the Mr. Bala will uh, share with you because Bala uh, is uh, associated. Mr. Bala, please kindly take over this question, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Shalisa, like um, we started uh, in 2010, uh, uh, we didn't promote Texella first. We promoted Guyana first. and uh, we started with uh, students from uh, all the uh, countries all the seven students are from different countries and we had a good establishment in uh, africa as well alongside india uh, it 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 exponentially grown like uh, from 7 till uh, the next intake was 50 and then uh, in 2013 to 14 was the, the ma we had maximum students which we had like 200 student 200 plus students travel to guyana and uh, uh, the the one best reason uh, for having uh, multiple country students is um, we promoted physically uh, uh, visiting those countries when we had 45 nationalities we almost reached to 30 plus countries and we all we only promoted guyana that time and next comes sexila uh, and when after the 2013 we had a lot of word of mouth uh, marketing so many of the parents started bringing uh, students from the same community same country so from there we have grown and uh, from 2015 uh, we started having more students from caribbean i would say like um, 100 plus students are from jamaica alone studying with uh, texella now so we are more caribbean very interesting now. i applaud you and how many gainees um, is in that makeup uh, yeah for gainees i can give you the percentage you know out of 650 percentage i recently calculated yesterday only there are 29% gainees are studying here in the different courses very good and so, as you say i think one of the important thing is being able to graduate them because that's that's been a little issue in guyana so as you said that's probably one of the um 
success thresholds you've been Mr. able to pass? Um, this is Sham. If I may just add on to what uh, Dr. Rajay and Mr. Bala were saying, you know, one of the the two of the key important aspects of our growth, one has been the quality of education, and we strive on that. You know, no, no matter how big or how small we are, we have always tried to upkeep the value and quality of the education we provide. Number one, number two, this is something that we have been telling everyone from day one. We give the most value for the tuition we take. You know, for example, the amount of tuition that we charge from students and the facilities that we provide in our campus in Guyana. I can guarantee you that no other school can claim that. You may always find bigger schools where you charge thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a year as tuition, which provides similar facilities. But for you know the, the tuition that we take, we offer the best services, and that has been one of the pillars of our success, I would say. As I have you on the floor, Mr. Sham Kumar, I I was pretty impressed that you're operating in three continents, which includes the U.S. and I would say the Caribbean, though you know not seen as a continent, another regional body. Um, how would you say anchoring in Guyana was compared to anchoring in those continents and countries that you operated? Was the dynamics here easier to um, allow you to establish yourself or it had its own challenges? And would you like to share any thoughts from you know, yourself or any of the panelists? Absolutely. I would probably you know, expect Mr. Bala to comment on that, but I'll give my brief uh, few cents on that. Like any other startup business in a new country, you know, we always face challenges also. Uh, you know, uh, being a new player in a new market in a new country, there were definitely challenges. Uh, initially, when it comes to getting approval, recognition, and so on. And anytime when you talk about a medical school establishment, a new medical school in a new country, it always raises eyebrows. Oh, what are these guys all about? You know, what are we trying to do? And education being a noble business, uh, it comes with its own perks and always challenges. So yes, uh, you know, we definitely had challenges initially. Uh, but again, over a period of two or three years, um, with the, again, uh, stressing on the quality of service that we provide to uh, students, once it started becoming very visible, uh, I think, you know, people started accepting us uh, in the community and in the whole uh, nation. And of course, at large, you know, around the world. And uh, Mr. Bala, if you want to add anything more to it, Mr. Bala has been uh, with the organization from day one. So that is why we are referring to him for some of the historical facts and data. Just to add on, uh, Mr. Bala, just, add, just to add on Mr. Shyam. Like one of the, like you are talking, Mr. Shariza, you are talking about the secret of this one. One is secret is the quality education. The secondly, I just, I want to add on that particular part. That we having a quality management system, man. And we are ourselves, they are developing, have a developed proper quality department in our institute. And for each department, we are having not less than 15 processes. And we are having an entire process and the policies are so robust and that is that we review every quarter for those policies and those processes. And wherever we find the gaps, we immediately just uh, ruffle, ruffle the gaps over there. So this is another fact that we are more into the process part. We are not, uh, we not we, our approach is not very uh, idealistic and all this thing, but we, I can uh, rather say that we are, we are more pragmatic. So more the, on the base of the experiences, on base of the feedback from the students, from the staff, from the community, we act accordingly. So that may be the reason that why uh, everyone is accepting uh, Texas American University and parents are also showing their interest and showing their confidence in sending the students to the guy now. Thank you. Mr. Bala. Thank you. Yeah. So, Bala, you want to add something? Go ahead. Yeah, we. I want to add uh, two, two, two points. Um, we learned uh, running a medical school in Guyana by setting up firstly, and then we moved to uh, US and then uh, to Zambia. So this was our uh, learning platform. And uh, I would say in a uh, uh, lateral way, although uh, it's a small country, but uh, we had uh, doctors, trained faculties in Guyana from different parts of the world. Uh, Guyanese doctors trained in Russia, Cuba, US, UK, India, and China. So we had that uh, resource in Guyana, which helped us uh, giving an international flair. And another side is, uh, it's an international university we claim always, but what it really brings to Guyanese is, um, Guyanese students can compete with an international students, not even leaving Guyana. So they could able to uh, have that international flair within Guyana. That is what we brought into the table. And many successful doctors are there. Already 250 doctors being graduated. And with this 
experience uh, five years before we started uh, uh, another medical university in the same name, Texla American University, Zambia. And this brought in a lot of value and training to us to set up a very successful university there. Thank you. Thank just you. Add on, add on go to ahead. Mr. Go ahead. Just to add on to Mr. Bala, and you will be delighted to know that, uh, no, ma'am, uh, that more than 65% of uh, the faculty, the teaching staff, belongs to this Ghana as well as the Caribbean region. So all the and, and 35% of the faculty and the other staff, we migrated from different part of the uh, world, like from the Philippines, from India, from South Africa. We do have the teachers from there, and the 65% of population of the teaching faculty is then um, is from Ghana. Just very, work. very interesting to know. So we don't have to ask you about local content there. <laughs> <laughs> You're well covered there. That's why I told you, Mr. Sham also told that we are not uh, any offshore, offshore university. Rather, we are having an inshore university. We are a Guyanese university, ma'am. Yeah, when you're at more than 50%, you're all Guyanese. Uh, just wanted to come back. Um, you spoke earlier about the number of programs you offered. And obviously, I've seen the shift over time where your anchor is medical studies. But you, you did mention you've also now um, gone on a tangent to some of the other areas like business management and so on. What drove you to that? And how did you find the transition at you know, moving from being more a medically anchored university to broadening and diversifying your scope? Basically, uh, we keep on researching the market, ma'am. And uh, like my, we, I told you that uh, we have a quality department over there who always uh, throw a survey over there. And we have the proper sales and sales department, sales and admission department over here who constantly go for organizing the seminars and the workshops. And we take a feedback from the people, from the students also. Like we are uh, present at our sales department, go to the schools and give the orientation, tell about the scope uh, scope of the Texas American University. From there we learn, and that uh, with these two subjects, like public health is uh, having good scope, and uh, our students are just uh, want to start this, uh, these courses, and the business management as well. So you will be uh, delighted to know that uh, uh, that in undergraduate course, uh, which I'm offering the BBA for the four years, there I'm having a more strength uh, as compared to my MBA, which I'm offering only for two years. So if I take a 70% of the students have opted for the BBA, that is for four years. And it's not a matter of the driving how, it was our vision that we have not only constrained to the medical school. Well, since beginning, it was our mission and a mission that we need to give a all, all the all the fields as per the requirement of the society, as per the requirement of the nation. That drove us to just start with this uh, accreditation and the start of the program. Um, thank you. I came across a note where you said one of your objectives is to deliver a lot of physicians globally. Um, I, I'd probably ask the CEO if he, any one of you, if you want to tell us about how much you think you've delivered so far, because I did see you have a high graduate level. Um, uh, hello. Uh, hello. I'll, Dr. Ajay, I'll start and then you can uh, pitch in your yes, views for that. Um, see, as uh, in, during one of the presentations, you might have seen that we have graduates from around 54 different countries. Uh, which is quite unique. You know, if you look at uh, many other Caribbean schools, you know, that is clearly not the case. Uh, most of the schools cater to an audience from North America primarily, and then of course from Africa and India, uh, and that which is the second market. But we have uh, been catering or providing support and services to students from 54 different countries, and that speaks a lot. Uh, you know, the fact that Texila graduates are practicing in every nook and corner of the world speaks a volume about who we are and what we are. You know, we, we believe in doing that and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and our sister campus in Zambia is actually spreading our vision and mission of, you know, empowering the physicians and workforce in the Africa region. Uh, and I believe that with uh, as the time grows, we have more expansion plans. Interestingly, we are also bringing in foreign university to uh, to Guyana, a U.S. university for the MBA and BBA program, and we are launching that this year in 2020. We would have done that earlier, but due to pandemic, uh, that took a back seat. Uh, so we are also bringing a U.S. university to Guyana uh, in this year in 2020. Uh, CEO, this may be a wild card, but given um, 
the many continents you operate in, do you see yourselves coming up with a program for culinary, um, a culinary program? <laughs> well, uh, the day we decide to go to Switzerland, we will establish our culinary school in Switzerland. You know, I'm just, uh, that's uh, <laughs> on the lighter side. Uh, well, that is not in the plan as of yet. Uh, we are not looking, we are looking at, uh, you know, in terms of medical education, uh, allied health, business management and public health. Uh, you know, that is our domain. Uh, we have not, uh, as of now, we don't have any immediate plans to venture into, uh, you know, culinary or, hosp or hospitality industry as of yet. Uh, you know, hopefully we will venture into that very soon. Uh, our most latest ventures are, as I was you know, mentioning, we have started a homeschool program um, in, in North America. Um, you know, we interestingly, we also offer our online programs. Again, this is not Texila Guyana, but the parent uh, system. Uh, we have also recently launched our online degree programs in French language, not in English, in French. Uh, in France and many other countries where you know, French is widely spoken. So you know, we, we want to expand on our existing uh, portfolio. Uh, by adding on more and more in terms of language and in terms of scope. So coming back to a question, culinary uh, not planned in the immediate future. And let me throw out another one to you because I mean, we're the Green Economy Committee and yourself, you're exemplary in many ways that um, your registrar outlined earlier in terms of green initiatives you've adopted with the school, its environment, energy, water management, so on. Um, do you think there's also scope for um, introduction of curricula for ecologists, sustainable environmentalists, um, those marine biologists, those are some of the areas we see Guyana may need in the coming years as we focus more on a green environment. Can you shed any light there? You know, as uh, Dr. Ajay was explaining, all of our program launches are based on a market study and market research. Uh, while we um, attribute a lot of our social responsibility uh, and we try to keep it end of the day, we are also a for-profit private university where sustainability is always a, uh, always a question and always something that we keep in mind. So, uh, you know, based on any market research, any program that where there's a scope, uh, we are open for it. We are open for thoughts and ideas. And Bala being very passionate about green energy and sustainable energy, uh, I think that is one field where he'll be more excited in you know, uh, Texila, uh, uh, you know, coming into that level is something that I'm sure Bala will be more than happy to take it up. Bala, you may also comment on this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ms. Shaliza, like Texila have an initiative uh, in terms of uh, uh, learning and development. So that learning de development, uh, it caters for uh, two things. One is their interest area as well as uh, the process. So this allows us to have a lot of certification, internal certification and certification outside uh, Texela also. So uh, many people uh, have initiated uh, the desired program. And uh, because we had uh, these committees as well as um, uh, the core group, uh, we have already done a lot of courses in relation to that. And uh, if future permits, like uh, we should come up with this program, uh, related to this uh, green energy or uh, sustainable programs. But um, everything is uh, spinning around sustainability and uh, sustainable goal of UN. So we at least play a role in education, but we practice uh, green and uh, what more to add, we will do that. And uh, as uh, we are discussing this, I want to highlight, uh, 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 super highlight this uh, thing, which is uh, tel Teloris Declaration. I think, uh, that is a, actually an initiative by Association of University Leaders for Sustainable Future. Uh, I just want to read it out so that um, uh, we hear loud uh, uh, those things. That is, increase awareness of environmentally sustainable development, create an institutional culture of sustainability, educate for environmentally responsible citizenship, foster environmental literacy, practice institutional ecology, involve all stakeholders, collaborate for interdisciplinary approaches, enhance capacity of primary and secondary schools, broaden service and outreach nationally and internationally, and maintain this movement. So this uh, declaration will give a guiding principle for the education institutes. This can be uh, adapted by others as well who, who are in Guyana and in Caribbean. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Bala. Um, I don't know if the registrar wanted to add anything. I 
I oh, think I see you seem to want to add something. Go ahead, Registrar. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for that opportunity. Just to add on uh, this one. Definitely, uh, like you proposed for the starting this uh, some of the program related to this uh, sustainability and the green environmental program. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, planning, we are just preparing ourselves to just uh, get a guidance from the TVEC, the Council of uh, Vocational, uh, Vocational Training which is represented uh, uh, by National Guyana. So we'll check, definitely check if we have any scope over there to start this small uh, certification course on that. We definitely, being a university, it's our uh, social responsibility to develop the new programs uh, which are required for the generation. And if uh, any program lies with the, this one, uh, TVET, then definitely we'll uh, try to explore so that uh, the student, those who will get this certification from the Texas American University and the TVET, they will get uh, some CSME certificate to work in the other Caribbean as well as in Ghana. Thank uh, you. Raj, yes, thanks. Rajar, as I have you, um, would you be able to give us an idea of the numbers of students who have graduated that are actually practicing in Guyana or the Caribbean right now, you know, our more immediate environs? Most of the graduates, uh, I'm not uh, sure about the recent graduates because every country, every continent have their own licensing exam. So uh, I can, I, I do have the data till uh, uh, July 19, uh, December 19. Uh -huh. December 19, we graduated around 75 students in College of Medicine and around 150 students for the nursing. So for all those, those students, those who are graduated in uh, December, December 2019, they are just uh, preparing themselves for the licensure exam. And before 2019 uh, graduates, I can tell July 19 until uh, that, uh, 2012, the first graduation, most of the more maximum students, as per the alumni survey, maximum students are practicing in one of the uh, one on other institutes. Some of them are engaged in the research. Some of them are engaged with the, some uh, internship. Some of the students, my few of the students, five, like four students are into residency program in U.S. If I talk specifically uh, for this uh, this Caribbean region, so last uh, uh, last last semester result I have received from the CAMC that my 95 students have appeared for the CAMC exam. CAMC exam is required for working, doing practicing in the Caribbean region. Uh -huh. so out of 95 students, 90 students have qualified in the first first go in the CAMC. And if I talk about only Guyana, so I do have the record of around nine, nine students, those who are still uh, they're already working in the GPSC over there. Uh -huh. and around 10 to 15 students are doing an internship over there. Uh -huh. so that Very data, uh, that uh, some, uh, some data I can have, uh, like the students are practicing, uh, some going for higher education also, like uh, qualifying the GMC exam, and they're qualifying over there. Some of the students are preparing for ACFMG. And most of the students, like I told you, that only 25% uh, Guyanese are here in my campus. So most of the Guyanese want to uh, work, either go want to go in a, at UK by clearing GMC, or want to go for USMG, ACFMG, and in the Caribbean region. So I'm having a data of that uh, Guyanese students, those who are graduated, and around nine, nine students are uh, engaged in the GPSC. And well, it's interesting. That, it's, it's, it might be good students, to follow some of that or some of them. Yeah, most of the students gone back to their own country and they're practicing and they're doing their job over there. All right, gentlemen, I, I'm going to, I have not noticed any questions in the chat box. Um, I, and I know the participants are hearing me, so I'll allow a few minutes for them to ask questions. Um, but in the meantime, CEO, is there any other remarks you would like to throw in at this point? So, uh, you know, first of all, uh, I mean, this is not a closing remark, uh, but this has been a great opportunity uh, for us to present ourselves. Uh, and, you know, Dr. Ajay also threw in a lot of light and information on who we are and what we are. Uh, you know, I hope uh, the panelists and the members of GCCI, the green team, uh, you know, welcome our suggestions, our thinking, uh, and welcome some of the initiatives that we have taken and as Dr. Ajay was mentioning, we welcome each and every member to visit our campus, uh, see what we do, see all the nice things that we do on campus uh, and engage in discussions with us. And uh, you know, we welcome all of you uh, uh, 
uh, to visit us in the near future. Not in the near future, as soon as the pandemic situation gets better and we are in a position to travel freely. Maybe as I have you on the floor, um, I know it's been your 10th anniversary and you might want to just share a couple of the corporate initiatives you've engaged in, corporate social responsibility initiatives of, you know, as we say, giving back, you, you might want to share a little of that as you have the platform. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bala probably can uh, give share information on the corporate uh, social initiatives from the campus in Guyana. Most recently, uh, you know, I think he can share. Yeah. Uh, at least before uh, pandemic, uh, our students uh, uh, do outreach programs. Uh, that's a part of the curriculum. Uh, and then, um, you know, as a par part of the curriculum, they do have uh, uh, a clinical training in different hospitals. Uh, apart from that, we do uh, uh, actively participate with the uh, Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as uh, the Private Sector Commission, which we would able to uh, reach out to the needy people. And then uh, recently, during, during the COVID, uh, we could uh, able to actively participate and contribute for the uh, needy people, uh, along with other associations as well. So that is the recent um, uh, social responsibility. And uh, uh, any any time when there is a, a need uh, uh, with the guidance of the, uh, the management, we always were open to Guyana. All right, um, I think we're coming up to wrapping up time. I still have not seen um, Oh, there is a question here. Is there any information about future plan of Guyana Energy Economy Committee? Guyana Energy Economy uh, Committee. Then you need Bala, to you, a, go you ahead, need go ahead. A, madam, you need to give us a guidelines on the sessions over there. What are the initiatives you are going to do and what are the things we can adapt as a textile energy? I, I mean, I, I can't... Um, I can't speak very informally, but I know there's the Guyana Energy Authority. And that is one of the stakeholders that we may need to uh, engage in. Um, you probably would know we did do a little um, feature in the print media on renewable energy from the perspective of electric cars. And, and Guyana Energy Agency is one of those agencies we, we plan to reach out to. So I guess they will have a bigger stake in that. Um, probably with their rollout plan, but I can't speak, but I'll take note of it's Dr. Abdul Ansari's um, question. <laughs> I would add. Um, um... <clears throat> we do have a petroleum energy committee, um, but as more oil and gas focus as against a broader um, perspective. Go ahead, Sri Yeah. Uh, everybody have to realize that uh, knowingly or not knowingly, we are contributing something for uh, energy in a positive way. Uh, we are all in the uh, awareness stage right now. So uh, that is why we are here right now to, to understand uh, what already we are actually contributing to the, uh, the green society or uh, green environment. So bringing in a small change by everybody uh, all, all those listeners, if they could able to bring in small change, like uh, by using the water responsibly, by using uh, light responsibly, um, uh, air condition, and proper sealing uh, of our house. So those small changes, if everybody could contribute, uh, it'll be it'll come as a big for the country as a whole. So, uh, but indirectly, we we in this forum, like forthcoming forums. This committee is planned to uh, exhibit and bring out that uh, how positive everybody is already contributing. So that is the idea of uh, this uh, session as well, if you agree, Mr. Teresa. Certainly, I endorse everything you say. And you know I'm big on plants. I wish I could tell everybody in Guyana, plant a tree, whatever plant it is in your yard. Have something green around um, that keeps the bird in the environment, the butterflies around, you know, that, that's something I would propagate. Uh, I'm seeing a note here, but I, I, no, I don't think that might be relevant to this session. Uh, gentlemen, though, um, let me ask you in the order of CEO, then registrar, and then you, Sri Bala, to make some closing remarks, and then I'll, I'll make a few comments and, and we'll wrap up. 
Um, you know, so, again, CEO, <clears throat> please go ahead, Mr. Shyam Kumar. And I must say, I, I really appreciate you taking time out to be with us here. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. You know, it's a, it's been a great pleasure to, um, you know, uh, present Texila to all the viewers and listeners who are a part of the team. Uh, you know, we really believe in bringing value to Guyana and to all our stakeholders, including our faculty, staff, and students who are associated with us. Um, coming back to the green energy initiatives, you know, I hope uh, our initiatives are seen uh, accepted uh, by the community and we want to work with the community and the green energy team to improve and improvise on what we've already done um, as we have further plans of expansion and be a role model uh, in Guyana at least uh, on green initiatives and sustainable energy initiatives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sham Kumar. I'll now invite Dr. Ajay Kumar Singh. And I'll tell you participants, I was teasing these gentlemen, they all seem to have Kumar as part of their names. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Ajay Kumar. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Eliza. Basically, I'm fortunate enough uh, that uh, I got a chance to work, uh, come to the Guyana and work in this pollution-free uh, country, which, uh, which is all responsibility of our to make it just sustain this environment, pollution-free environment. Like Bala told, the small, small things uh, give, give us other sustainability. Like uh, one thing I can just uh, always uh, advise here, please kindly save your power energy. Energy, you have, I know that Ghana got a resource of oil and gas. It doesn't mean that mother, we can just uh, try to waste these things. Try to just go along with the way, if you get a chance to travel somewhere, please kindly pull, pull your car and just travel over there to save the this, uh, oil, oil resources over there. Secondly, the power, power switch on, switch off the lights whenever it is required. And don't use more the air condition. So because the, the poisonous gas which is extracting out after giving you pulling, that poisonous gas is really warming my global environment. To this note, I am thankful to you, and I definitely want to rejoin the session if we, if you have any other sessions on that particular part. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Registrar. You do sound like an environmentalist there. <laughs> and tell your wife, um, she has my heart if she's given you that advice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Shribala, can you go right ahead? Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, as I um, uh, interacted with you uh, at the beginning of the session, uh, while we are uh, talking too much on COVID, uh, this session would have been uh, out of this topic and uh, this gave us an easiness. Uh, still sorry to bring in that COVID again, but um, this gives us a, a, a different uh, track to people to think even in this situation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for Johnston Chamber of Commerce as well as the Green Economy Committee, and especially to Ms. Shelisa and Sandy. Thank you, Sri Bala. And let me say, um, as your moderator and as the chairperson of the Green Economy Committee of the Chambers, I'm very pleased that you um, accepted our invitation to come on board. I think tonight um, was very informative uh, from a very broad perspective of the university, not just talking about what you offer in terms of program, but delving into the details, also bringing out the green initiatives you've undertaken, which are exemplary. I also want to encourage you to um, have other university pattern themselves after you, and, and hopefully you can even endeavor on, on stronger green initiatives. I'm also pleased that um, listening to the panelists tonight, um, as I jokingly said, you do have quite a bit of local content in, in terms of the student population, in terms of employment, in terms of giving back. Um, and that I think is, it's a uh, kudos to you as we say um, locally and um, keep that up. I'm also hoping that as the chambers embark on our initiatives, we can continue to count on your support through Bala. Um, I know he'll have to seek your permission to engage in those initiatives. But I want to thank you for coming on board. Uh, it was very insightful. Um, I myself have learned a lot tonight. Uh, I could not believe 
you're operating from more than three continents with um, a high student population. I think I recall reading in one of the slides, you had, um, you, you believe you have the highest student population right now for any university in the country. And I don't think you'll put that carelessly. So yeah. thank you all. Uh, go ahead if you want to make any remarks. Uh, we are not here to compare ourselves with the national university. Ma'am, definitely, we are getting all the feedback from the different universities. Whatever the best practices uh, the good universities are doing, we try to implement the same. All right, and I, as I I also saw a note from one of the participants saying that they love Guyana, I, and I think I can feel your love for Guyana when you all speak. But gentlemen, thank you so much. Really appreciate. Um, know that this will be live stream, um, so that you're as a member of the Georgetown Chambers, um, you will be getting a platform there. And I'm also pleased as um. I'm, from the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce perspective to say to you, uh, I, we're appreciative of the fact that you're a member, which also means you trust us. Um, you've added to our network of over 350 um, members. So feel free to reach out to us at any time if there's anything we also can do to help you grow your reach or expand your business or expand your network, we're there for you. Thank you so much and have a good evening all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please stay safe. And yes, and let me say thanks to Sandy, who Sandy Boyne, our admin manager from the Chamber of Commerce, who is always very supportive of me on these projects. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Take care. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, gentlemen, for.